Hello, my name is Tom Preston, and um, thank you, Grant, for that uh, uh, introduction there. Um, I am going to be taking you through a technical demonstration of the 2500 MJP printer. Um, so just to begin with, I'm going to just say that this is a really brilliant machine. Um, I'm going to take you through the pre-steps of um, setting up a print, uh, to taking you through setting off a print at the printer, seeing the printer work, um, and then taking you through the post-processing and the different methodologies of post-processing of the uh, 3D printed parts. So um, the software that we use to slice um, our models is called 3D Sprint. Um, it's a, a exclusive software by 3D Systems for all of their plastic printers. Um, it's a really powerful software which allows us to um, do a number of different uh, processes within our, with our parts as such. So we can import our native uh, step or IGES files, our native CAD, uh, convert that to a mesh body, uh, apply repair tools to fix uh, geometric problems as such, uh, place it into a build envelope, uh, auto place and uh, orientate our parts for maximum efficiency, create support structures and send to the printer. So a quick introduction into the workflow. So we have a part here, part geometry that we're um, going to look at. Uh, we're going to add this to the printer. You can now see the print envelope of the 2500 here. So it's a small carabiner part that we're just looking at, kind of maximizing the efficiency of this build as such. So what we're going to do is actually create a fill of the build automatically using the fill pattern tool, which allows us to copy the part and fill the, the build envelope. We can obviously stack in X and Y, um, but also Z, um, which is really nice. You can see here that um, we have three channels that we work with within the 2500. So each one of the channels um, uh, is shown by the dotted line here. We can see that basically filling the channels up um, is, is how the printer is working. So it actually has a head which is only about eight centimeters long, but we have eight, uh, uh, three lots of eight centimeters that we're running uh, along with the print head. So I'm just adding this now to the queue um, for the printer. I'm just going to add this now. So just seeing it's sending to the printer now. So this is a very basic introduction. I'm just going to move on to something a little bit more complex, which um, allows us to see uh, some of the more interesting features that the Sprint software enables us for. So again, I'm just importing a part here. Um, it's a jig fixture for a mold. Um, we're just going to do some simple measurement tools here so I can see the measurement of, of a part using the measurement tools. I can uh, transform the geometry using the transform tools so I can scale, rotate, move very simply and easily. You can see that the measurement is updated with that scaling as well, which is really nice. We can uh, do auto placement, which allows us to auto place our part for maximum speed of building. Um, I'm just going to hide the, the distance there. So this way I can then move on to something a little bit interesting about the 2500 is the ability to create lattice structures within our geometry. So the lattice structure works by creating a shelled object. So right now I'm creating a two mil shell of the object, which means that now I've got two kind of structures in the in the build. So you can see on the part list here that I've got the, the uh, first bit and then the uh, internal volume which has been created. So now once I've got the internal volume, I can actually create a lattice structure within that. So by creating the lattice, I can then create different styles of lattice. You can see how it's kind of highlighting the internal core in a red uh, color. So there's a number of different lattice structures that we can create. So uh, jack, star, um, or a 3D grid as such. Um, or I can create it as a solid or as an auto support. So just creating it as a wax support structure. I can see the, um, uh, the uh, lattice structure being created, generated in the bottom corner as such, but it's only procedurally generated. All the lattice generation is done on the machine, which is quite nice. So this is only telling uh, the printer what we want for the lattice to be made as a such. And we can see here that I can uh, manipulate the uh, cell size and thickness of the elements so that I can change the fill ratio of, of the part, which actually improves the uh, cost of this part 
um, without reducing the strength of it, which is really nice. Um, so I can just do um, a quick now adding some vent drains. So um, I could leave the wax inside the part or I could um, uh, remove it using these vent drains. So again, it's a really nice tool for adding small holes in the part which connects the internal volume to the outside. So simply kind of clicking on the part here, I can add vent drains throughout the part where the wax can come out from the internal structure. So um, again, so how this mechanism works is it has the part material being created as well as a wax support structure. Um, the wax support is actually generated everywhere it can possibly be generated in the fact that we are creating like a 2D shadow effect on our part. Um, in this way, we have perfect um, generation of our parts through the print. Um, and we can just melt that support wax off after the build, um, which we'll come on to in, in a short while. So again, just creating an estimate here of the um, use of material and the print time as such. So six hours, 28 minutes. Um, I can see the uh, estimated use of material and wax supports. Okay, so the 2500 is really easy to set off. Um, simple interface, easy intuitive. Um, so even through the 3D sprint, we send down to the printer, which um, then we have the small LCD screen, which we set the print off from. Um, the machine is really easy to set up and can be printing within the same day of um, delivery. So this is adding the material into the printer. So we have a uh, two slot system so that we can add material throughout the print. So we can um, continue printing even if we're lower materials. So in that way, we uh, never run out of material during the print. Simply setting off the print is click of a button and it's ready to go. So in the print, we can see the part being laid down um, and the head moving back and forth, quite a fast paced um, uh, process as such, so it's been sped up quite a bit. Um, it's, it's moving the head back and um, forward in the uh, X, Y position, and then that bed is dropping down in the Z, uh, allowing us to layer on top of the parts. So you can see this was a, a four hour print, very, very quick uh, process of creating these parts. So once we have the print finished, the print bed actually comes out of the build as well. So we, it's attached with the wax onto the build. And this way we can actually just swap out a build plate and continue printing, which is really nice for throughput on this machine. Once we have the build plate off, how do we get the parts off? There is a hot plate or a fridge method of doing this. A hot plate will heat the bed, which is a, um, a, a steel structure and melt the wax so that they can be pulled off. Um, and a fridge freezer will contract the wax and actually just pop off from the, the build plate. Um, so the, both methods are really effective for taking the parts um, off of the build. Once we have the parts off the build, we now have to remove the support wax. Now the uh, go-to method of uh, removing the support wax is the easy clean method, which is a, uh, a steam bath uh, tool, um, which has a steam bath and a uh, oil bath. So there's two components with this. The steam bath removes the bulk of the wax and then we move to the oil bath, which is used as the easy rinse solution, um, a cornstarch oil based um, uh, fluid, which removes the surface wax from the parts. Um, the solution is held at 65 degrees C uh, to remove all of the surface wax. So once the parts have been cleaned and easy clean, um, we need to then uh, remove the oil from the parts, which we use a simple warm soapy water um, and wipe the parts. Um, we get really, really nice results with this. Um, so the carabiner is the, the part um, that we're showing off here. So using this methodology, we get the full kind of carabiner movement and it's really, really nice um, because of all the, the assembled part there, which is really good. Um, another method to remove um, the support wax is using an, uh, an ultrasonic tank. So an ultrasonic tank, again, is a, is a one-step cleaning process, which is quite nice. And the fact we can drop our parts into the ultrasonic um, and it will remove all of the parts, even the surface wax. Um, so we use isopropanol and a mineral oil to, um, as a mix in the solution to remove all of the uh, support wax. Um, and it also removes all of the entrapped support wax as the ultrasonic movements kind of get into the final to reach areas. Um, 
The other method is um, using an oven. So this is good for batch processing. So we can put them, put lots of parts into an oven, and melt all the wax off, uh, and then take them out, wipe them um, off of the, the surface wax. And this is really good for bulk removal of um, support wax. So, so for big parts that have lots of wax, uh, an oven is a really good solution. So just having a look at some of the examples here, we can see the differences between the ultrasonic oven and easy clean. They all look very, very similar. Um, in finish as they all do a very similar job. So this is the part that you'll be getting uh, sent to you. Uh, this is an example of uh, an assembly part. It's got a moving element, it's got a flexing part. Um, it's a really, really cool uh, part to, to, to show off this uh, detail and also capabilities. It's also got entrapped wax. You can see the 3D Systems logo and the uh, Project uh, 2500 label there which shows that you can actually have entrapped um, stuff for, for labeling and whatnot. So just to have a quick look at some of the stats for printing off this carabiner clip. So a quantity of one, so printing it one on the 2500 um, in the GCL uh, material takes approximately one hour, 55 minutes. Um, material cost is six pounds, 76, um, and the time per part is one hour, 55 minutes. So this is a, a very quick print um, nevertheless, but um, we can start to improve by increasing the quantity of the time per part. So if we look at doing a set of five parts, so again, same material, print time is still an hour, 55 minutes because of the channel system on the 2500, where we are able to fit the whole channel full of parts um, and still continue at the same time. So the material cost is 21 pounds, 36 pence. So reducing cost per part, um, and the time per part is 23 minutes. So again, the reduction in, in uh, uh, time is, is massive. So let's fill the build up in the XY. So we can see the print time is now four hours, 23 minutes because we're using the three channels. Uh, the material cost is six pounds, 10 pence. Um, but now the time per part is 17 minutes. So we've reduced the uh, time per part massively uh, again. So let's see how far we can push this. So now we fill the Z as well. So we've um, filled the X, Y, and now the Z um, by maximizing that kind of throughput. We're getting 12 minutes per part. So it's a maximum throughput um, on, on this as such.